Hello and for person, this is Anton, and this right here is a simulation of what Proxima Centauri b, the nearest exoplanet to us, might sort of look like. But it's a simulation based on our perception of what terrestrial planets might be like somewhere out there. In a lot of recent papers though, we've discovered that, well, we might be a little bit too optimistic in how we imagine a lot of these terrestrial planets. They might look entirely different from planet Earth, and they also might have extremely different properties both inside of them and on their surface. And today we're going to be discussing this new, relatively recent study that essentially presents a new idea about these new planets that the scientists believe exist out there. Terrestrial planets, but they refer to them as the eggshell planets. Or I guess to be more scientific, brittle lithosphere planets. The planets whose surface is literally breakable, kind of like a typical eggshell. And so I wanted to discuss this new idea and new proposition, and also focus on the idea of a lot of these terrestrial planets we've found so far being way, way more exotic than we can even imagine right now. Something that relates to another video I made that should be popping up somewhere right there at some point. And the proposition itself is really not far-fetched at all. As a matter of fact, when we look around at planets like Mars, Venus, and Earth, we realize that even though these three planets are already quite different from one another, generally they do contain relatively similar elements, or specifically relatively similar minerals on the inside. For example, they all seem to contain quite a lot of olivine, the green mineral that makes a huge part of the crust, and also makes a big part of the mantle and transforms to some other minerals as well. It's also one of the reasons why our planet has so much water. Olivine and its derivatives are really really good at maintaining and sort of keeping water on the inside and releasing it with time. And so minerals are a really important and somewhat essential concept when it comes to studying exoplanets and trying to understand what goes on on those planets and how those various planets could be different from planet Earth and even planets like Mars and Venus. And this is a really important feature to investigate because we usually assume that a planet can be habitable if it's just a certain distance away from its parent star and if it has a chance to potentially have liquid water. But what we don't really consider is the fact that liquid water does not just come from a distance from the star. The liquid water and the habitability is also formed by a lot of geologic activity on the planet. And more importantly, what the crust is actually made out of is extremely important for potentially habitable exoplanets. So for example, in order for us to find another planet like Earth, it really has to have so many different features extremely similar to planet Earth. So not just being in a habitable zone and having water, but also having just the right composition, just the right structure, and just the right mass and gravity in order to maintain a lot of this balance and to produce stable habitable conditions on the surface. One of the videos I made previously also discusses what's known as the stellar archaeology. The discovery coming from a lot of different white dwarfs that essentially swallowed their planets that used to orbit around the stars that used to exist here, that suggests that a lot of these terrestrial planets were extremely different from planet Earth and possessed conditions that we can't even imagine, even though many of them were very similar in mass and possibly even in the position in the star system compared to planet Earth. So this is a really important discovery and this once again highlights the importance of studying the geology of various planets. And when it comes to some unusual geology, one such proposition comes from this recent paper, the existence of eggshell planets. Planets that, like eggs, have extremely flat surface and also have extremely brutal surface that very likely breaks very easily. Planets that also create conditions that would be almost impossible for life to survive on. A lot of these planets would be very likely uninhabitable. And all of this is mostly because of the lithosphere and specifically the upper crust of the planet that's essentially one single piece kind of similar to an eggshell. And in this case, there are no plate tectonics, there are no continents, there are no mountains, no volcanoes, no major geologic components. I guess in some sense, you could literally call this flat Earth. But in this case, it's really flat because of the geology and because of the way these worlds are created. And because the entire crust on top is just one single piece. The piece that doesn't allow for any major topography to exist here. And not having plate tectonics, or essentially not having any sort of geological activity on the surface, 
already prevents this type of a planet from having a lot of different cycles like planet Earth. A good example of what happens when planets have no plate tectonics and have no actual cycles are planets like Venus. Eventually they become just way too extreme for anything to survive. And interestingly enough, Venus actually has some properties on the surface to suggest that it could also be seen as a kind of an actual planet, but only in some parts. It does have certain lowlands that are completely flat and also have an extremely thin and somewhat brittle surface which can break if something hits it. So Venus is actually one of the better examples to try to study this. But even Venus in this case is a lot less brittle. It actually is not an actual planet in that sense. And so in order to understand what exactly happens to these planets and how such planets can form, the scientists in this paper ran thousands of different models and simulations, changing various parameters such as the gravity, the age of the actual planet, the temperature on the surface, the temperature inside the planet, changing a lot of other parameters in order to see what sort of planets will be produced in certain conditions. But in this case, they really focused on a planet extremely similar to planet Earth, both in mass and of course in size, which is what we usually call an Earth-like planet. And so by changing various parameters such as distance from the host star, the internal temperature, composition, age, they started to produce various models with different thickness of the crust itself, the thickness of the lithosphere. And as I mentioned before, a lithosphere determines an extremely important factor in determining habitability of a planet. For example, the movement of various plates, such as the subduction plates, recycles a lot of various gases and a lot of different materials in the Earth atmosphere. One good example here would be the CO2 gas that sort of gets trapped in all of this rock, then slowly makes its way lower and lower into the mantle and eventually gets released with a lot of volcanic eruptions. But it's not just CO2, it's a lot of other gases as well. But to even have volcanoes like this one right here, or to have subduction, or really any kind of plate tectonics, you have to have a certain strength of the lithosphere. The crust has to be not brittle enough and not thick enough. So kind of like what we have on planet Earth. But according to their model, once they simulated all of these planets, many of them turn out to be very different from planet Earth. And specifically, many of them turn out to be these actual planets very brutal surface that's easy to break with even a single impact, and practically nothing geological on the surface, completely flat terrain. With one major factor playing the most important role, the surface temperature. And in this case, planets that would be much smaller but also a little bit older than other planets would usually have very thick but brittle lithospheres. In this case, it's somewhat similar to what we have on Mercury and what we have on Mars which is also why neither of these planets can have habitable conditions long term. But then some larger, younger planets, in this case something we usually refer to as a super-Earth, would have very thin brittle lithospheres. And in this case, the only comparison we have from the solar system come from Venus as well. It's certain parts of lowlands on Venus that are just extremely flat and also very, very thin in thickness. And if Venus did not have a thick atmosphere, a single strike from a single meteorite would completely shatter the surface here. And then depending on certain combinations, you can have extremely brittle layers, whose surface might resemble something like this, flat but full of cracks everywhere. And certain parameters produced extreme lithospheres on the surface. In this case, it was usually a super-Earth, extremely young, relatively close to the star, and also containing a lot of radioactive materials inside of it. Which to some extent could also be described as Venus. Although Venus is probably one of the milder cases of these types of planets. And so when it comes to studying exoplanets, it's really studies like this that allow us to understand that just the position and I guess the temperature on the surface is really not everything for the planet's habitability. A lot of things here will depend on the actual rocks on the inside, on the actual temperature on the surface, and more importantly, on the types of minerals present inside. And so this study that, as always, you can find in the description below, presents a really important first step in trying to identify important properties for the future studies of exoplanets and exoplanets that could be potentially habitable. And here we're talking about being habitable for millions and billions of years, for basically life to develop and potentially survive. And in the paper, the scientists have also identified several planets that we've discovered in some of the previous surveys. And here we're talking about this planet, this one here, and a few other ones, 
that seem to be actually these unusual planets with extremely, extremely thin lithospheres. Possibly even as thin as one kilometer. And that's really because of the temperatures on the surface and because of their position in the star system. With some other planets, even the ones in the habitable zone of their stars, being on the opposite spectrum, extremely thick lithospheres. Which once again suggests that just finding a terrestrial planet somewhere out there doesn't really mean much. We still have to understand what happens on its surface, we still have to understand the geology and the composition of the minerals, and we still have to know more about the planet by finding different ways to study what happens on the actual surface and how the crust, the atmosphere and a lot of other interaction here might potentially influence the habitability or create a planet with extremely unpredictable and somewhat brittle surface. Which once again suggests that planet Earth seems to be just that one lucky planet. At least that's what we get from a lot of these studies. But we'll talk more about some of these discoveries and some future discoveries in regards to exoplanets in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.